Are you thinking of doing your first marathon? Has a marathon always been on your bucket list? Well, it's a worthy goal and an achievement you can always be proud of. So today, we're here to help you stop thinking about doing your first marathon and actually start that journey to doing one. Doing a marathon is no mean feat. 42.2 kilometers or 26.2 miles is a challenge for even the most experienced of runners. Running a marathon is a big challenge, but it's also a great accomplishment. Both the training for the event and the event itself can be incredibly rewarding. And for that reason, everyone should do one, including you. So yeah, we're here today to help you on that journey with some advice and some tips and hopefully stop you from thinking about doing a marathon one day and actually setting some goals and embarking on that journey. But before we do, please give us some support and subscribe to the channel. You can click on the uh, bell icon for notifications just down below and subscribe to the channel. And if you're feeling very generous, give this video a like. Let's get this going then with where to start. And to be honest, this is the hurdle that most people stumble on. And as a result, never really get things going. Now, it can be easy to think that for you to do a marathon, you need to have been a runner before, knocking out 5K, 10Ks, half marathons, getting PBs, and doing them on a regular basis. And if you're not, well, you have no business in even contemplating doing a marathon. Well, that is completely untrue. You absolutely can start your journey now, even if you have never raced or run over anything like that distance before. So the trick is to make sure that your plan and your training, your training workload match your current and your personal fitness level. Don't think that because you are running a marathon, you suddenly need to be running 30, 40 or 50K a week tomorrow. You should simply be building upon what you currently have to the point that you can run a marathon. So to answer the question, where do you start? Well, where are you currently? If you can only run 3K twice a week, well, that's where you start. But if you can also run 30K in a week, well, that's also where you start. So now that you know you can just get out of the door and crack on with your training, I guess the next big question is, what does that training look like? What does marathon training even look like? Well, essentially marathon training is just running regularly and progressively. And they are both very important points, regularly and progressively. And by regularly, we mean that as soon as you are recovered from one run, you should be challenging your body with the next run. Initially, that might mean that you're running every three days and then you progress to every second day or maybe even every day with time. And progressively means that you increase the challenge of the runs as your body gets fitter and used to the running more and more. Usually this means adding more distance to the runs or maybe even actually adding an extra run per week so you're increasing that overall run mileage and volume. It can also mean that you're challenging in different ways. You're adding a different stimulus pace changes to the runs and actually by including some faster pace work, you can see some rapid gains in your fitness. You will see that your week builds as you get fitter and soon becomes a regular schedule. Two runs becomes three, becomes four. Your long run gets longer and longer and some intensity starts building in some of the runs. So as you progress and fitness is improved, you may start to wonder when you should pull the trigger and enter that marathon. Well, we'd recommend entering it right away. In fact, by committing, setting that goal, it's harder to let life then get in the way and dissuade you from actually doing this marathon altogether. Now, just don't go at entering one in two weeks time or maybe even 10 weeks time for that matter, which kind of brings us actually back to our original point of it depends on where you're starting from. So let's work backwards. We'll assume you are going to build to at least five hours of running a week although you may want to do more and it's not advised to build more than 10% per week in your mileage and so you can see from the graph that if you're starting at two hours of running you need a minimum of 12 weeks to get to your peak mileage and if you are only starting with one hour then you need more like 20 weeks to get to your marathon mileage. 
So as you can see, you need to start from where you are currently at and you want to make sure that you're building that gradually to minimize the risk of injury. Of course, we're not gonna tell you exactly what mileage that you need to build up to per week, but we would advise a minimum of 50K or 30 miles per week to make sure that you are really ready for that marathon. Of course, building that up no more than roughly 10% per week. You can, of course, build up to a higher mileage and you can, of course, build at a very gradual rate if you like and prefer that. But of course, that is gonna lengthen the whole process that little bit more. And that brings us on to actually a really important point. If the goal is too far into distance, it can be incredibly hard to stay motivated for that. Say for instance, you've figured out where you're starting from, you've done the maths and worked out that perhaps that marathon isn't for another six months time or maybe even more, but it can be really hard to lose that motivation as the light at the end of the tunnel is just too far away. Well, in which case you want to set yourself some intermediate goals. If the marathon is, say, in six months' time, perhaps enter a 10K in 10 weeks' time, maybe a half marathon in three or four months' time, and then that marathon comes along in six or seven months' time, and therefore you've got little goals along the way to keep you motivated. So then, if you have followed the plan well, you've built your training up consistently and conservatively, I guess the next big question that we often get from marathon novices is, how do I know that I can actually cover 26.2 miles or 42.2 kilometers? Well, the answer is that both we don't until you try, and that we do, based on the hundreds, thousands, millions even of runners that have come before you, that providing you have consistently run, built that mileage up to a minimum of 50 to 60 kilometers in a week or 30 to 35 miles, we are confident you can cover the distance. A lot of novices want to test themselves before the event by running the distance or close to it in training. This is not a good idea. While you may think it will leave you more confident, the reality is that running the distance on your own without A stations or fellow runners or the reward of a finisher medal waiting for you is significantly harder and you will only convince yourself that you are not in fact ready for the marathon rather than the opposite. Also, by covering this kind of distance in training can take a lot out of you and actually take many days, if not even weeks, to recover from and therefore will affect your overall training for the big event. You actually should not even consider running more and actually even often less than 32 kilometers or 20 miles in your training for the marathon. Trust us, it will be okay. And finally, before I go, a few other things that you should consider. Running shoes. Yep, get yourself some good running shoes. Not necessarily carbon plated super shoes, but some good running shoes with some good cushioning that fit your feet and suit your running style and gait. Not only is this gonna make your running more enjoyable, it'll probably also help with injury prevention. And nutrition. So start paying attention to your daily nutrition around your day-to-day -day training to make sure that you are fueling adequately. This isn't a license to eat as much or anything that you like, but as I say, pay attention to calories burnt, calories coming in to make sure that you are fueling and staying on top of that well. Now it's also time to start thinking about your race day fueling, which you can actually start practicing in your training. So things like gels, chews that can be absorbed quickly into your bloodstream, making sure that you find nutrition that works for you, you're happy with, and you can take on within the marathon. And pacing. Many novices go out far too fast in their first marathon and as a result end up making that final 10k of the marathon much harder than it needs to be. Remember the goal here is to finish and simply that. You can go after beating your PB once you actually have a PB. Well we hope that we've inspired you to get on with entering that marathon. I hope you've actually even got a little tab open on your computer already, Googling marathons in your area. Well, best of luck with your journey. If you have any more questions, please drop them in the comment section down below this video or use the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner and we will answer your questions in person in a future GTN Coaches Corner that come out each Monday. Well, best of luck and happy running.